In this video, we're going to take a look at dates in Excel 2016. And we're just going to start off here by starting in cell A1, and I'm going to type in today's date. Today is 7 slash 18, whoops, 18 slash 17. Okay, let me move the cursor out of the way there. So that's how I'm entering it. And when I hit the Enter key, a uh, couple of things happen. Uh, first of all, it changes the 17 to 2017. And you notice it made the column just a little bit wider so that I could see the whole thing. And as usual, if the column is not wide enough, what you get is pound signs. So anytime you see pound signs, uh, just make the column a little bit wider and you'll be able to see the data. It's also to po uh, possible to enter dates using uh, hyphens. We'll do 7 hyphen 18 hyphen 17 and hit enter. And uh, it changes the hyphens into slashes, but it does recognize it as being a date, and uh, it formats it as a date with slashes. Um, so it changes the uh, 17 to a 2017, and the reason it does that, um, it, that's the default. You can still display it with two digits, but um, I think the reason it does that is it kind of goes back to the um, year 2000 problem when uh, dates were typically represented as two-digit numbers and uh, you know number 99 uh, you'd simply put a 19 in front of it and it'd be the year 1999 and people realized that uh, once the year turned to 2000 if they put a 19 in front of the 00, zero they'd be off by a hundred years so that was basically the year 2000 problem and it was also around that time that Excel started uh, changing your two-digit dates into four-digit dates by default so um, that's what you get by default. It takes up a little more space in the column, but it's probably not a big deal. And if you don't like it formatted that way, like I said, you can go back and change it so it only displays uh, two digits. Um, now, let me see, I only need one of these here. I'm going to delete the bottom one. And I'm going to take a look at this first one here. And uh, one thing I want you to notice about the date is it is right aligned in the cell. And as you know, numbers are right aligned in Excel. and uh, text is left aligned uh, so this is somehow a number and I'm going to go to my home tab here and we're going to go to the number group and uh, you see it's formatted as a date so because I did the slashes Excel figured out I was talking about a date and I'm going to change the format though I'm going to change it to general and I get something here that looks really funny it doesn't appear to have any relationship at all to July 18th, 2017. Um, so let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. I'm going to go back and change that to a short date. By the way, you can also do a long date, but uh, that's pretty long. Um, so I'm going to go down here and I'm going to type in uh, 7 slash 17 slash 2017, which was yesterday's date. Okay, And now I'm going to take both of these and I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to format them as general. And now you get an idea what's going on here. Um, yesterday's date is represented by one less than today's date. And uh, the day before that would be one less and, and so on, counting all the way back. So an obvious question is, um, when was day number one? So I'm going to put a one in here. And these numbers are called date serial numbers. And a date serial number just basically uh, counts the days. Um, since day number one. So let's find out what day number one was. We can go back and forth between uh, formatting a date as a date and formatting it just as a serial number by using the general format. So I'm going to change all of these back to short dates. And there you see that the beginning of time as far as Excel is concerned was January 1st, 1900. Okay. So what happens if you need dates before that? Let's try putting in some other numbers here. Uh, the number before 1 would be 0, and the number before that would be minus 1. And um, I want a sequence of numbers here, so I'll just do my autofill thing and click and drag. And so I've got numbers going all the way down to negative 20. Now, I'm going to format those. I'm going to tell Excel that those are serial numbers. Format those as short dates. And something interesting happens here. Um, first of all, the 0 becomes 1, 0, 1900, which is obviously not a date. And I think the reason for this is that it makes it easier for you to work with times um, 
which is something we'll talk about in another video. Uh, we're just talking about dates here, though. But I think this has to do with time. Now, what about all this other stuff down here? Well, you know what pound signs mean? Uh, it's that the column is not wide enough, so let's make the column a little bit wider and a little bit wider. And it turns out that no matter how wide you make the column, uh, you're never going to see anything but pound signs there because there is no representation of negative numbers as dates. So um, we're never going to get anything to show up here. So I'm just going to drag the mouse over those and delete them. And I'll go up here and I'll even delete this one too. So, okay. Um, now the reason for doing serial numbers like this is to make it easier to do date arithmetic. Count how much time has elapsed between two dates. So we're going to do some date arithmetic here. I'm going to put in um, 12 slash 25 slash 2017 and that is Christmas. So I want to find out how many days it's going to be till Christmas. So I'm going to take uh, type in a formula. So start with an equal sign. And I want A2 minus A1. Okay. And this is an example of Excel doing something uh, where it's trying to guess what you want and it guesses wrong. Um, I do not want this number to be formatted as a date. Okay, I want it to be the number of days until Christmas. So I need to go back up here and change that to general or something else that represents numbers. So it's 160 days until Christmas uh, from today. Okay, now. It turns out that the serial number 160 happens to be a date in June of 1900, uh, but we don't want that to be uh, formatted as a date. So sometimes when you're doing this, Excel tries to figure out whether something should be formatted as a date or not. Sometimes it guesses right and sometimes it guesses wrong. So if you're looking for something that is not supposed to be a date and Excel formats it as a date, the solution is just to go up here, you know, format as general and then you're good to go. Okay. Um, let's look at a couple of other things here that with dates. Uh, I'm going to type in 7 slash 18 slash 17 again and um, I'm going to click on it and I'm going to get my fill handle but I'm going to do something different with the fill handle this time. I'm going to uh, right click on it and Click and drag will go down about you know 20 rows or so, and because I right clicked when I was dragging, uh, it doesn't fill in without asking me what I want to fill in. Well, um, we're going to look at uh, these four options right here. Okay, first one is to fill in the days, and I just get the next day and the next day, so it basically adds one all the way down here. Okay, uh, let's undo that. You can do a Control Z or click on the undo up here, and let's right click again get your fill handle right click again drag it down about 20 rows or so and this time choose fill weekdays okay well today's Tuesday so the next day is Wednesday Thursday Friday but then Saturday and Sunday the 22nd and 23rd get skipped over so uh, it'll do the five weekdays and it'll skip to five weekdays and skip to and, and so on so it skips uh, Saturday and Sunday every time and let's undo that uh, let's get our fill handle and right click and go down about 20 rows again and this time let's tell it to fill in the months and so because today is the 18th it's going to give me the 18th of every month from now until February of 2019 um, if your number here is 30 or 31 then obviously what it does for months that are shorter than that is it just picks the last day of that month so um, let's tr actually let's try that one. Let's undo that and let's type in uh, seven slash thirty thirty one slash seventeen. Okay, and then we're going to click on it. We're going to get our fill handle. We're going to right click and drag down, and then we're going to tell it to fill in the months. And September does not have a thirtieth. Uh, November does not. Uh, February and April. So uh, you get the last day of every month in that case. Okay, let's undo that and let's look at one more example here. Let's uh, right click again and go down and tell it to fill in the years. And I get the 31st of every year through the year 2016. Okay, one more example of doing dates. Um, the very first one we did, uh, I had you right click. There's no need to right click if you just want to fill in consecutive days. If I use the fill handle and the autofill feature in Excel and just click and drag, do an ordinary left mouse click and drag, uh, you'll get consecutive days. So there's really no need to right click and pick your menu option when you want just consecutive days. 
But if you want any one of those other three options, where you do weekdays or you do months or you do years, uh, you can easily do that by right-clicking before you drag. Okay, that's uh, an explanation of how dates are represented in Excel 2016, and in uh, another video we'll take a look at some date functions.